something that I've noticed over the years, or over maybe, I think probably with the emergence of, of Garmin's and, and uh, Apple's and, and all these kind of brands that a lot of negative connotation comes with, the accessibility to data has, has risen enough so that from a performance perspective, if used right, and I think this speaks to your point a little bit, if used right, the opportunity to use data well has, has been a, a huge shift change. Um, so I think that where where we had to use, and some of this can be negative as well, I suppose, from a certain perspective, where we had to use intuition and we had to kind of rely on, on athlete feedback uh, more so, now we can kind of uh, use a little bit of data and, and find out what an athlete's doing, how an athlete's performing, et cetera, without their feedback. Now, the problem there lies in that uh, these same coaches that Sean's talking about then rely exclusively on that data and don't know how to coach people anymore. They actually become kind of data entry clerks and, and, and we have a problem there. So I think uh, it's a double-edged sword, obviously, but something we use particularly, I think, well, is the opportunity to use data and then that use, use that data uh, to kind of reflect the athlete's uh, perception as well. So if I've got the, the, the numbers and the metrics and then I can ask the question, how did you feel? And then I can kind of work with that feeling and, and the athlete's interpretation of things. I can use both to create a very good picture of the athlete. Uh, so the emergence of data and these data platforms, if used intelligently, has been a, a big uh, step change that uh, I think has been useful.